Hi guys, um, this is Dave, hashtag armchair theologian. Okay, well today I'd like to talk about sin. And what is sin? Where does it originate? What is the concept of sin? What's the relevance? Does it exist? Is it relevant in today's society? <clears throat> big topic, big subject. I just want to start off by um, just sharing something with you. I was witnessing a while back to someone who really close to me. Um, and we got on to the subject of salvation the need to be saved and ultimately the question of sin and you know I'm not saying this um, in a judgmental way whatsoever um, but he his defence or his reaction to what I was saying was that he believed that he didn't sin he was a good man, therefore he had no need for salvation. He had no need to be saved. In fact, his biggest question to me was, um, sorry, his biggest question to me was, what do I need saving from? And of course I got onto uh, the topic of sin, where he then replied, he does not sin, he's not a sinner. He does not need saving. And, you know, I could relate where he was coming from in a sense because this man was a good, moral man. You know, he did no harm, meaningful harm to anybody. He lived a good life. He worked. He paid his taxes. He provided for his family. You know, he was a good citizen or is a good citizen. Um, so, yeah. Um, I respected his view, you know, I could see that he was quite staying on his view and that he wasn't open to what I was saying, so I just left her at that. But <clears throat> I want to explain what I believe sin is from a Christian perspective and a biblical sp perspective. But let's just start off by <clears throat> talking about rules. We live in a society which, this is being um, videoed in the UK, so we live in the West, we live in a, a um, <clears throat> structured society where we have to have rules, laws, and these rules and laws keep the status quo, they um, give people boundaries, and they are a good thing. Without them, there would be chaos. <clears throat> so, in society, as a citizen, we abide by the rules of the land, the laws of the land. Um, now, not only do we abide by the laws of the land, but our morality, our moral compass is set by the state for example it tells us at what age we can be married it tells us who we can marry I mean it wasn't such a long time ago that a man could only marry a woman now society tells us that it's okay for a man to marry a man or a woman to marry a woman they've set the moral compass, they've set the moral code, which as citizens we adhere to and we live by. <clears throat> if we were to break any of these rules or laws, then we would have to face the consequences 
as a citizen of breaking those rules and of course there's different severity in the rules for example I'm in my car now if I were to speed in a 30 mile an hour zone done 38 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone in a an upholder of these rules, these laws, a policeman stopped me, clocked me on his um, speedometer machine. He said you were doing 38 and a 30, and he would prosecute, more than likely. And my fine, or my punishment, would probably be three points on my driving licence, and... Um, Maybe a £60 fine, I don't know how much it is now. So that's breaking, if you like, a minor rule. If I was to go out and steal from a shop and get caught, the police were called and the owner of the shop wanted to prosecute, maybe my fine or punishment would be more severe. Going on another level or a higher level if I was to embezzle or blackmail, then the punishment would fit the crime and would be more severe even then. But as a Christian, I abide by a different set of rules. And those rules are not set by the land or the government of the day. Those rules are set by whom I believe to be the creator of the universe and in fact the creator of mankind. So what are these rules? Well, somewhere in the in the Bible it says that God lays on our heart what's right and wrong. And he does this through our conscience. Now, this conscience is quite sensitive. A non-believer has a conscience, a believer has a conscience. The difference is the non-believer may just believe that, may think that his conscience is just inherent. And, you know, it. Um, we're just born with it. The believer believes that this conscience is from God. Now this conscience can be severed. The conscience can be hardened and it can be deemed useless if it's abused. For example, if I was a man who enjoyed um, instilling violence on other men, enjoyed hating them, and kept doing it and doing it and doing it, you know, then my conscience in that area would just go. If I was a thief and didn't didn't care whom I took money from, whether it would be a rich man or a poor man, as long as I got that money, I was happy. <clears throat> and I kept doing it, then my conscience would be hardened and 
become useless. <coughs> but as a believer, the conscience is a... and a non-believer, the conscience is an amazing tool. It's an amazing sense, something deep within, which tells us what is right and what is wrong. But, of course, our conscience is... <clears throat> fallible. So God has laid down a set of rules, a set of guidelines in the Bible. <clears throat> the rules are through the commandments, the guidelines are through the proverbs and the precepts. <clears throat> and these rules are <coughs> excuse me these rules are put in place that we would obey these rules and therefore live a good wholesome life a life pleasing unto God and then thus reap the reward of our lifestyle but of course we're imperfect. As a believer, we are imperfect. And we can't stick to those rules. We can't 100% obey all those rules. At times we're going to slip. <clears throat> but God demands perfection. God demands holiness. He demands righteousness in its perfect sense, in its perfect form. So basically what is sin? Sin in the Christian eye is disobedience to God's rules. Now, the most righteous man that's ever lived, apart from one, may have done wonderful acts of kindness and goodness and charity, yet he will still not attain perfection. <clears throat> There's only one that attained perfection, and that is Jesus Christ. Only one man that ever walked this earth that was perfect in every way was Jesus Christ. So, how do we deal with sin as a believer? If God demands perfection, <coughs> and calls us to be perfect, then how can we be perfect? It's an impossible task. And God knew that. So God made a way in his wisdom and his kindness He made a way that sin could be dealt with once and for all. And that was through his only begotten son. The God-man. Jesus Christ. I'm recording this video on Good Friday. Um, 2018. The day that Christ was crucified. Some 2,013 um, years ago, approximately, <coughs> where Christ had a miraculous birth. He was born of a virgin, the Virgin Mary. The Holy Spirit fell upon Mary and she was to bear a child. And this child was God himself. 
Jesus Christ. I don't want us to get sort of um, tangled up in the Trinity and God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ as one. I just want us to focus on Christ at this time as the only way that man may be saved. So he walked this earth 2000 and 13 years ago. He was crucified. His ministry lasted for three years from the age of 30 to 33 where he proclaimed the kingdom of God and proclaimed the good news that salvation has come through him. That message is still as relevant today as it was then. If possible, even more so. <coughs> so Christ, God, walked this earth, proclaiming truth as a sinless man, never committing one act of disobedience to the Father, never sinning. And subsequently, that life of sinlessness caused him to be crucified. I'll just open the window, it's getting a bit steamy. <coughs> yeah, that act of, 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 of purity and sinlessness caused him to be crucified. And he was crucified as the ultimate sacrifice for mankind. So, as a Christian, we have a desire to draw close to God, a desire of being saved from the snares and the, the snares and the consequences of sin. And, cry, and God has shown a way through Christ. <clears throat> There's consequences of sin, as we talked about. The consequences of wrongdoing in society is punishment. <clears throat> Different degrees of punishment. <clears throat> but... God's rules, God's ways are eternal and flaunting or living a life which is a life of disobedience in the sense of having total disregard for God's rules will lead eventually to spiritual death. See, the consequences of, of disregard to God's rules are more severe than any rule that man can put upon the most heinous of criminals. <clears throat> because God's rules, God's punishment for sin is death. But he's a loving God, he's not a, a bad God, he's not a <clears throat> conniving God, he's not a, a God who desires men to go to hell or to be separated from himself. He's a God who desires mankind to be reconciled to him and that's why he made the way through, through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the only way that man may be saved. Man cannot be saved through any other way but through Christ alone. So if anybody's watching this short message and feels that their heart's been touched and they want 
to accept God's free gift of salvation through Christ, then I will pray for you shortly and I will pray that God will touch your spirit, awaken your spirit, awaken your senses to the eternal things <clears throat> that you may get on your knees and repent <coughs> excuse me for the things the wrong things you've done in the past and the wrong things you're going to do in the future it's not going to be an easy road it's not an easy road it's a narrow path it's a narrow gate we enter in but it's worth it more than worth it it's an amazing journey which can start for you today, right now. <clears throat> so, I'd just like to pray, it's your prayer. <coughs> Dear Lord, I just want to pray for anybody who may be watching this video right now, Lord, who's whose heart has been touched by these words, Lord. Lord, that you may reveal yourself to them and show them that you are indeed the only way. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, you are the only way that man may be removed from the curse of sin and death only through Christ alone. And Father, come upon them, Lord, and give them those words of, of sorrow and heart to accept you Lord in a deep way a life-changing way through the mighty and precious and holy name of our Lord and Savior my Lord and Savior our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I pray amen okay guys I just hope you enjoyed the message and um, this is the first of many if you've got any questions for me, just leave them at the bottom. Um, I'll I'll get back and I'll answer as many as I can. Um, I call myself an armchair theologian, Dave armchair, hashtag armchair theologian, because I have a a general knowledge of the Word of God through the Holy Spirit. I have a desire to know Him more. And the things that have ever been revealed to me, I have a desire to pass on. So, I'm not going to say I hope you enjoyed the message because it goes deeper than enjoyment. This is life, truth. Um, it doesn't get any more serious than this. So take care, um, have a blessed week, stay strong, if your life's a mess, if you're in a bit habitual sin or habitual wrongdoing, then stop, because that will bring no peace, no joy, only pain to you and to the people who you are involved with or involved in, um, you know. So, take care. And thanks for, for listening. And bye for now. <laughs>